Assalamu alaikum. Here is another vlog in my series of vlogs on literary theory. So today we are going to discuss eco-criticism. So what is eco-criticism? Eco-criticism is an inter intentionally brought approach that is known by a number of other designations such as green culture studies, eco-politics and environmental literary criticism. Eco-criticism emerged in the 1960s with the start of the environmental movement and the publication of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring in 1962. But it really began to take off in the 1980s. Eco-criticism investigates the relation between humans and the natural world in literature. It deals with how environmental issues, cultural issues concerning the environment and attitudes towards nature are presented and analyzed. This form of criticism has gained a lot of attention during recent years due to high social emphasis on environmental destruction and increased technology. The context. Early theories in literary and cultural studies focused on issues of class, race, gender, region, and other subjects of critical analysis. The late 20th century has woken up to a new threat, ecological disaster. The most important environmental problems that humankind faces as a whole today are nuclear war, depletion of valuable natural resources, population explosion, proliferation of exploitative technologies, conquest of space preliminary to using it as garbage dump, pollution, extinction of species, and uh, many others. In such a context, literary and culture theory has begun to address the issue as a part of academic discourse. Various versions of environmentalism developed, deep ecology and ecofeminism were two important developments. These new ideas questioned the notion of development and modernity and argued that all Western notions in science, philosophy, politics were anthropocentric, human-centered, and androcentric, male or man-centered. Technology, medical science with its animal testing, the cosmetic and fashion industry all came in for scrutiny from environmentalists. Eco-criticism is the result of this new consciousness that very soon there will be nothing beautiful or safe in nature to discourse about unless we are very careful. What are the assumptions of this critical approach? Joseph Meeker in an early work, The Comedy of Survival, Studies in Literary Ecology, published in 1972, used the term literary ecology to refer to the study of biological themes and relationships which appear in literary works. It is simultaneously an attempt to discover what roles have been played by literature in the ecology of the human species. William Rookett is believed to have coined the term eco-criticism in 1978, which he defines as the application of ecology and ecological concepts to the study of literature. Eco-critics believe that human culture is related to physical world. Eco-criticism assumes that all life forms are interlinked. Eco-criticism expands the notion of the world to include the entire ecosphere. Moreover, there is a definite link between nature and culture, where the literary treatment, representation, and thematization of land and nature influence actions on the land. The important questions that eco-critics uh, eco seek to uh, discuss in a text are, how is nature represented in the novel, poem, or play? What role does the physical geographical setting play in the structure of the novel? And how is science in the form of genetic engineering, technologies of reproduction, sexualities, open to critical scrutiny in terms of the effects of science upon the land. There, there have been two waves of eco-criticism. The first in the 1980s and the second in the 1990s. The first wave emphasized writing about nature as both a field of study and as a meaningful practice. It maintained the distinction between human and nature, but promoted the value of nature and the need to speak and stand up for nature. It was the duty of the human humanities and the natural sciences together to raise awareness and come up with solutions for the environmental and climate crisis. The second wave expanded upon the first 
broadening the reaches of environmentalism. Eco-critics eco of this wave redefined the term environment to include both nature and urban areas and challenge the distinction between human and non-human and nature and non-nature. This wave also led to the eco-justice movement by examining the way that the poorest and most oppressed members of a population fall victim to the most adverse effects of climate change and environmental degradation. There are different types of eco-criticism, which include pastoral, wilderness, and eco-feminism. Pastoral, uh, pastoral eco-criticism, found primarily in British and American literature, focuses on the dichotomy between urban and rural life, often idealizing the nature and rural life and demonizing urban life. Wilderness examines the ways in which the wilderness is constructed, valued, and engaged with in a literary text. The wilderness is portrayed as a scary, threatening place beyond the borders of civilization, or it is portrayed as a place of sanctuary where one can find relaxation and reflection. Ecofeminism, on the other hand, analyzes the connection between the domination of women and the domination of nature, usually by men. It draws parallels between women and nature, which is often seen as feminine, fertile, and the property of men. Ecofeminism also includes other aspects of environmental justice, such as racial environmental justice. Here are some important works uh, of environmental or eco-criticism. Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, Desert Solitaire, A Season in the Wilderness by Edward Abbey, The Comedy of Survival, A Literary Ecology and a Play Ethic by Joseph Meeker, Politics of Nature, How to Bring the Sciences into Democracy by Bruno Letter, The Future of Environmental Criticism by Lawrence Boal, Ecology Without Nature by Timothy Morton. To conclude, eco-criticism is the interdisciplinary study of connections between literature and environment. It draws on contributions from natural scientists, writers, literary critics, anthropologists, and historians in examining the differences between nature and its cultural construction. Cheryl Glott Glottfelty in What is Ecocriticism says, eco-critics encourage others to think seriously about the relationship of humans to nature, about the ethical and aesthetic dilemmas posed by the environmental crisis, and about how language and literature transmit values with profound environmental implications. Thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed this brief introduction to um, eco-criticism. Goodbye and God, God bless you all.